Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So today's video, I thought I would do a afternoon tea comparison video for the Ritz London and the Ritz Paris. And I got asked to do this, I think last year by some of you guys, you wanted, you're interested to kind of get my opinion on, on both. So I just thought I'd sit down, it's a nice sunny day, and just film a video and kind of talk through what I thought were the pros and cons of both. I'll link a card in the corner and in the description bar below those videos if you wanted to check them out. And if you wanted to subscribe, just click the subscribe button. Um, it'd be great to um, take you on the journey with me with more afternoon teas this year as well. So yeah, so what we'll do is we'll start with the Ritz London and we'll start with the pros. So for me, because I've been there before, it was a really nice experience like 10 years ago for my sister's birthday. So I wanted to go back and when I got there, the venue is like a gorgeous, ornate gold room. And it's always in that area from, from memory, I think. And it, it's, it's nice to be able to sit there. You have like a pianist um, who plays kind of uh, relaxing music. And if there's like various special occasions, you can kind of pre-order like a, a cake and things like that, which is nice. And some of the things that I did like there were the, the fillings. I liked the fillings of the Ritz London. Uh, I've made notes so I don't forget. And also they had a different variety of breads, which I don't always get with afternoon teas. So each sandwich was a different style of bread. And, and I liked that, it was, it was nice. It kind of mixed it up and gave it a bit more of a new dimension with the sandwiches, like the finger sandwiches. And if you're not familiar with the Ritz, it is quite formal and there is a dress code. So you can't just turn up in short silly flip-flops or something and it, you know you do have to adhere to that really both for the men and for the women so there, there is the dress code which I quite like because it makes it a special occasion and a special experience um, and it's not something I just turn up wearing shorts anyway but also you'll notice the waiters are really formally dressed and I really like that it also adds to the experience if you're not used to it as well so maybe if you come from overseas but I like the way the waiters are dressed, um, their attire, and yeah, it's, it, that kind of adds to it for me. Also with the Ritz London, for the price, which is like, I think it was 72 pounds, excluding like the service on top, etc. But you, you get bottomless, so you can have teas or coffees. I think they even included um, hot chocolates when I went, uh, and also the sandwiches. So what will happen is they'll come out on the tiered, trays if i've got footage I'll, I'll kind of slot in throughout the video just to give you visual if you're not familiar and if you've not seen the videos and the sandwiches come out on the trays and if there's any in particular you want more of you can ask for more and they bring out another tray with them on and the same with um, the small desserts and things i actually had i think at the time when i went last year i had like a coke because it was in the summer and it was quite hot but again, the selection of teas they bring out and they'll just top up as, as you go along. And you can have different types of tea as well. So if you try one, you can try another as well. You don't have to stick with the same one. So they're basically the pros, I would say, and the cons for the time that I went last year. So I wasn't quite expecting this and was a bit disappointed, again, because of the price you're paying. You're paying kind of, you know, 70 pounds. Uh, for the experience so you, there's a certain standard that I would expect but they'd sat me literally right in the kitchen doorway of where all the waiters come and go again if I've got footage I'll put it on screen uh, which was not really an actual seating area that it was like squishing me in and it just didn't feel special it didn't feel considered and was not great because I was constantly getting the waiters and the door swinging open right behind me and that just I don't know it just wasn't that's not really what I expect from like a five-star setup and whether it was just because it was just I was one person and not like in a pair but even then I'm a paying customer this isn't uh, you know these aren't sponsored or anything I pay for the afternoon teas that I do so as a paying guest I'd equally want the same experience as someone else who's paying then the nature of the room that it's in it's a gorgeous gold room but it's quite limiting in in light it's very dark and not very light and airy they for some reason they keep the afternoon tea in that area and they always have done from from my recollection of going each time 
and it means that they try and cram in as many covers as many tables of guests as possible so the space between each of you is actually really close together and you can easily hear other people's conversations like it's you know you're kind of on top of each other and where I went about 10 years ago there that wasn't necessarily the case it was a little bit more spacious and it just didn't feel really closed in and after speaking to some of the waiters they were saying to me they were doing like they do the most covers or one of the most covers for afternoon tea in London which as a volume and a quantity I'm sure that's great on a profit margin for me I would rather they reduce that profit a little bit and make the experience nicer for the people that are going and paying because I did feel like cattle one in one out kind of it wasn't relaxing it the environment as much as it was aesthetically beautiful it was crammed and made people feel rushed in in my experience of being there and that was a shame because when I'm paying the money I, I want that to be part of what I'm paying for it's not just about the food for me I mean the food's important for an afternoon tea but it's got to be consistent and it's got to be overall like the venue the the service etc equally important a few of the cons with the Ritz London as well uh, just looking at my notes so because of the nature of how the room's set up there's not as much kind of privacy if you're with other guests I mean I was on my own at the time but if I was celebrating something or it was like maybe an anniversary or an engagement or something yeah you don't really have that much privacy because everyone's kind of on top of you so I'd actually had um, coke coca-cola so I it was quite hot and they gave me um, the glassware was beautiful but they gave me top-ups of coke throughout but one thing that they kept on doing was putting plastic straws into my coke which I didn't need I didn't ask for and actually they were putting two in my coke glass every time I was getting a top-up I'd asked at the start no need you know don't need straws that's fine and I just kept on getting more and more so every time so I think I had about three or four coca-colas while I was there and I and I was getting through like six to eight straws because they were replenished them each time even though I'd specifically said look please don't do that I I don't want these plastic straws so that was just it wasn't really taken on board what a customer wants and especially when I'd specifically asked the waiters to to not to not do that was again it's part of the experience it's part of what you are paying for so if I'm kind of saying look I really don't need these thanks but no thanks to take that on board and it was just not at all which is a shame Um, I'm not a big fan of like plastic straws and things and especially when it's just uh, a bit overkill and then also they do the sandwiches and one of the sandwiches it was like a ham sandwich I think and it just had chunks of like gristle in it and hadn't been trimmed or kind of um, served up in a way that was, it was I, I couldn't eat it basically it was it was just kind of all gristle so that was just not particularly nice in regards to the actual food I would say the uh, the scones and the clotted cream they always give you a good selection of clotted cream but you only ever get one jam like one preserve and as much as that's great that's you know very consistent I I like to have a bit more choice, a bit more variety, especially when I have so many afternoon teas. So it's it's nice nice to kind of mix things up. But for me, that was a con that they only offered like one type of jam. And at the end, well, coming towards the end, so you have your tiered food and your top-ups of drink. And you then have the next stage, which is like a choice of a slice of cake. It, It could be like three or four different options. They'll come around with like a trolley, I could see it throughout the afternoon tea going around to people and I was like great well, I'm not sure which one I'll pick and it got to the point and if I've got footage out I'll put it in I was sitting there they basically cleared down all the dining area there was pretty much me filming um, and maybe one of the guests and they basically forgot about me and I was like hey I haven't had the next stage of the afternoon tea um like is it is it okay and they were like oh okay right and it, it seemed really inconvenient for them that I had asked to actually have the rest of the afternoon tea uh, that you've paid for so the, and a waiter came out brought over the 
the choices and I said oh could I just take one away with me because actually I'm now short on time I had to actually get a train and they were like oh no we, we can't do that and, and I kind of thought well I'm the one that's like going hey you forgot me what's going on and they just kind of cleared down around me and it was just it was just very it made me feel like look you need to go now like just go even though I hadn't actually finished my afternoon tea and I'd not actually been there that long so yeah it just it was very disjointed and I felt an inconvenience to them it, that was how I felt anyway in that situation so I couldn't take the cake or an option of the cake they showed me what the options were but it wasn't something they were prepared to um, allow me to take with me whereas you can do a doggy bag at the Ritz with you know some scones or some other things you don't finish but for some reason that was not happening so that was a bit of a shame and it just made me kind of go right okay I'll just pay and, and leave then <laughs> uh, kind of abruptly really so which is which is unfortunate I would say I think it wasn't like that when I've been before so this could just be like a one-off or whatever but I've had friends that have been since and they also felt like it was very much cattle and and focusing on the volume of covers not the quality of the covers they were doing I think would be a fair breakdown of that really from how I experienced it so overall it's bit of a mixed bag but also then comparing it to the Ritz Paris now this was the first time I'd done the Ritz Paris I went with my friend Anne I'll link the video um, in the corner and the description bar and she'd never been to either Ritz actually so it was her first experience she actually selected the champagne afternoon tea and I had the traditional one now my one was 68 euros and hers was 88 euros from recollection so we'll go down the pros first now like I said with the Ritz London they only offered one like jam option and I really really liked how they did it in the Ritz Paris so when you go there again if I've got footage I'll put it on screen you get a selection they're mini jams but they're all different types and I loved the choice of the different types as much as like strawberry jam is quite traditional for an afternoon tea it's always nice sometimes you'll get like you know lemon curds and, and other jams uh, but I don't think from any of the afternoon teas I've done none of them have given me as many jam and preserve options as I got at the Ritz Paris now I think I wrote some of them down so I got raspberry I got strawberry jam I got blueberry and red currant jam I got an apricot like preserve and also honey so that was a really nice mix and again with the scones now it depends on what you like I'm not a big fan of like raisins or sultanas so I quite like plain scones but I liked and it, I think at the time it was one of the reasons I picked the Ritz Paris I really liked the fact they did they did chocolate scones which I don't think at that point I'd had one before in, in any other afternoon tea and I'm because I'm kind of a sweet tooth person and I love chocolate I was like oh that'd be really nice really yeah, the kind of sweeter option for a scone so that was a real positive for me I, I really liked it they were quite small they weren't too heavy and uh, kind of uh, dense very petite but again when you've got all the different kind of extra things with it all the different jams it was really nice then also there was this really lovely brioche like salmon that was delicious I did really like that as well as as a food one thing I would say as well about the environment compared to London Ritz now I've never stayed at Ritz Paris as a, as a guest so I don't know what the rooms and all the other spaces are like I did see some of the areas downstairs which were stunning very ornate stylish uh, lots of gold everywhere but the afternoon tea that I'd booked was out in this kind of like garden style area so it was really light really airy again I was there in the summer so it was very bright it was very chic and very stylish the people that were there it looked like most people that were having afternoon tea were staying at the actual hotel for, for when I was there anyway but I mean you don't have to stay at the hotel to have the afternoon tea and 
it was very calm, a lot more spaced out. So the seating area, I mean, the, the chairs weren't the most comfortable, but I liked the fact that me and my friend Anne had a lot more space around us. We weren't all kind of claustrophobic and kind of wedged in together. There was no sense of rushing or, you know, one in, one out. And the price difference is about the same. I can't remember if the Ritz Paris was bottomless. Uh, it may have been, but I mean, the amount of food that we had, we were, we were, we were pretty stuffed. And then also some of the, the good things were, I was having the traditional afternoon tea, but my friend Anne, who drinks alcohol, she really wanted the champagne afternoon tea. And when you looked on the menu, having a glass of champagne on its own was about 30 euros at the time. So she, it, it made it cost effective for her to have the afternoon tea in with the, um, the champagne afternoon tea set up. But she said to me afterwards, it was like at that point, the best champagne she'd ever had in taste. She really, really liked it. But she also said the size, the quantity of the champagne they were giving her was more than what she's used to in the UK as well. So she loved it. She absolutely loved the drink, really very much so and the dress code so again there is a dress code you can't just turn up in your flip-flops and shorts and for men as well but it's i would say it's a lot more chic than the ritz london the ritz london is very popular it's kind of a tourist location to, to a certain extent you get a mix of all different people all different walks of life the people that served you there were quite a few waiters but the waiters weren't in what I would say traditional style dress. They were smartly dressed though, very smart, but not in the, the style that Lon um, Ritz London does. So it, it just felt a bit more businessy in style than, um, than how the waiters are. And I'm not quite sure how their outfits, what, how you describe it, but it's very traditional waiter-esque in Ritz London. I liked the fact that my hot chocolate was also included in my traditional afternoon tea. I don't always get that with afternoon teas. Um, wherever I've been actually, some places overseas as well, it's either tea or coffee. Um, so, and also the, the hot chocolate was gorgeous. It tasted really nice. Then you'd also got the stage where I'd obviously been missed out at the Ritz London, where you get selection of cakes at the end. And usually I would say it's like three or four different options. And I liked the fact, unlike what Ritz London does, in the menu, they actually show, and I think if I've got an image or something, I'll put it on screen, they actually tell you what, what those are. So you can actually think about it throughout and then they let you know at the end or something. You don't have to pick right at the start, but it's nice to know at the start what the options are as to what you might want to savour later. So I had like a, it, it was like a long chocolate, I think you'd call it like a milfoy. It was delicious, it was super rich. I took actually some home as a doggy bag, but my friend had like a pistachio meringue thing. And I love pistachio, absolutely love pistachio, anything pistachio. And I actually liked both. I tried a bit of hers as well, which was lovely. And it was nice to be able to mix and match but I liked the fact that I knew about it and it was written down in advance so I can kind of think about maybe what I wanted. So that was really lovely. The food element was nice. I liked the food in both locations. It's hard for me to say with the consistency with Ritz Paris because I've only been once, but for the Ritz Paris also did have sandwiches, but also a savory mix items. It wasn't just sandwiches. Uh, so depending on what you like, I think if you're very much into just wanting finger sandwiches as the savoury option, then you might prefer the Ritz London. But for the Ritz Paris, that was quite nice to me. It mixed it up a little bit as well. So for the cons for the Ritz London, the customer service was good. It was consistent. It was attentive. They weren't kind of in your face, but they were keeping an eye on you if you needed a top up or anything like that, which is lovely. But I would say at one point, the afternoon tea got really busy there was a lot going on and the service slightly dropped in the sense that there probably wasn't enough waiters at the time to accommodate the volume that had come in and 
I noticed a little drop in how, and so did Anne, on the service. So I would say it's hard to gauge because the majority of the time that I was there was kind of in an off-peak time and it was fine. But I would say if you do go, bear that in mind. If it's like a busy time, if it's a Saturday, if it's literally over like the peak lunch window, um, something to consider because it did drop it just a little bit. They were still very attentive. I wasn't left like I was at <laughs> London Ritz where they just started tidying all the tables and pretty much like packing up and I was just sat there. It was not at all like that but it did, I have to be honest, it did drop a smidgen when it got really really busy and there was like quite a few people in but that's fine. So basically there's not that many cons I would say to the Ritz Paris in compared to my um, second experience at the Ritz London but again this is just all what I've what's happened when I've gone it may be amazing when you go but I would say about the food and what you're kind of expecting the price is about the same for both mine was 72 pounds for Ritz London and 68 euros for the standard traditional afternoon tea at the Ritz Paris so there's not a huge amount of difference um, I'm pretty sure it's just London Ritz that is bottomless though I, I'm, I don't think the Ritz Paris was bottomless but correct me if I'm wrong but for me because it's about the food it's about the venue the environment I'm in the price and also the customer service I personally would go back to Ritz Paris again even if it was bot not bottomless I would rather do that again than do Ritz London off the back of the experience I recently had because overall it didn't quite meet what I was expecting. I mean, if you've never been to Paris as well, I've been to Paris a number of times over the years. So if you've never been, I think the experience of, of going to Paris and having afternoon tea just adds to it, especially if you're from the UK. So that's kind of what I would say in a nutshell as to what I thought about both. And equally, I do appreciate that I could go again to Ritz London and it'd be amazing everything's amazing you know so I get that and I understand that but for me to go to all these other afternoon teas that I do do quite often I go back to places again like I did with the Ritz London and um, from like 10 years ago I'd be more inclined to go back to Ritz Paris than I would to go back to Ritz London for the afternoon tea so and I think that's kind of fair from how I would gauge both experiences but I can't wait to try some more obviously there's other Ritz venues as well not just Paris and London and I'm sure I'll add to them over the time but I've got plenty of other afternoon tea locations booked in um, both overseas and back in Europe so hopefully you guys, you guys will follow on with me if you also wanted to subscribe just click the subscribe button and if you liked this video or if it was even slightly helpful if you've not been to either location or you're considering one this year just comment below let me know what you think and also if anyone else has been to any of the Ritzes what you thought was good and maybe you can recommend somewhere that I've not been to as well I'm going to be also doing afternoon teas which are more on the kind of affordable cheaper option I did do some last year and I'll link those in the card in the corner in the description bar below as well so they're not all, you know, £100, £80, um, depending on what you want. You may want something more affordable. So I just thought it'd be nice to do a playlist around that as well. So, and some of those are in the UK. But I really hope this was helpful and I've been meaning to do it for so long. And I've been asked by various people to kind of just mull out what I thought. But yeah, I hope it was, hope it was helpful. I hope you enjoyed watching and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.